We're starting today looking at the back here and I just removed a uh, the staples from this side and you can see on this side the uh, foam was laying almost flat with this bow and when you get to the corners <clears throat> that's that's not possible because there's a bunch of overlap here so you have some foam thickness and uh, what I've started to do is uh, I took out the staples and I stretched this burlap so that the it would it would be a little more taut on the bottom side and that would push this foam up and what I'm wanting to do is use a consistent thickness of foam all the way across rather than you know some thick foam here and some thin foam here which is what I had I think that'll just create a line and I want this top to be as smooth as possible especially back here where it's coming over the bow I don't want it to look you know lumpy and stuff like that so what I've done like I said I pulled the burlap tight and then when I get it uh, you know I, I only undid half the staple so I could keep the center line right which we still have a uh, a mark there so I just pulled it taut stapled it and then threw a couple tacks in over here as well I'll pull the other side up do the same thing I cut our piece of foam here <clears throat> you can see it's got a little bit of taper here at the end about four and a half inches worth and then I think it was seventeen and a half inches to the center mark so uh, the center section is an inch and a half wide and then uh, when we get to here it goes from inch and a half to two inch uh, on the last four and a half inches so I just kind of mirrored that around and, and it fit up real nice uh, what I wanted to point out here was I always use this uh, Wellwood high strength and uh, this includes high temperature and the thing I, I see that everybody used the 3M Super 77 all the time and 77 can let go at higher temperatures so you know this is going to be out on an asphalt parking lot and all that kind of stuff and the temperatures will exceed you know probably 120 degrees in the car at some point in time I just don't want it to let go uh, 3M has one I think called Super 90 that is a high temperature high strength uh, it's a little bit more difficult to find but I have found it at like Home Depot and Lowe's stuff like that so One of the first things you need to do with your new top is there are there's a tensioning cable for the rear window, which is this guy here, uh, and you'll see a little pocket around here. I'm just getting these uh, nuts off the end of this threaded cable here. And when you flip this up, you'll see a piece of string under here. That piece of string is to uh, is intended to allow you to pull this cable through. So uh, you know you kind of get one shot at this guy. So what we're going to do is not only tie it on, but we're going to tape it so that it doesn't fall off, and you know make sure that we have a successful pull. The last thing you want to do is get this thing halfway through and uh, lose your lead line. Uh, fear not if you do lead, lose your lead line you can use uh, some rubber tube or something along those lines uh, to make it happen for you but we're going to hope that that does not happen. Uh, one little trick so I grew up the son of an electrician and we pull wire all the time and you know so what you want to do is number one tape it on really well before you get to the, uh, the good part here. Let's, let's take care of that. So we're going to tape it on down below there. Then we're going to work our way up this threaded piece and uh, make sure our string is right in line with it. Then when we get to the end, we're going to kind of cone it up so that it makes a point and of course, you know, this isn't the easiest thing to do with string because it's not real rigid. With copper wire, it works real well. And then we're just going to fold that over and give it a little flag right there. And uh, the hope is that that'll sort of act as a guide to pull this sucker through. 
So, uh, you know, we'll just start over here and make sure we're lined up. We'll do it nice and slow here. And uh, guide her in. Now, of course, we're, uh, we're already hitting the corner there. Away we go. So just like that, our cable is installed. We're taking a look real quick with a ruler here, and the rubber on the rear window should just about meet the rubber uh, here. Uh, the rubber on the convertible top, I'm sorry. Let's look over there. The rubber on the convertible top uh, should just about meet this rubber that surrounds the rear window. And we just need to fill in this gap here with the listing that's sewn into the convertible top. So if you notice, uh, I'm looking at the most critical area here is this corner. That's our biggest gap. So if we measure down from the rubber here and, you know, we're about four inches worth of opening. You know, it's five to be conservative, it's six to be good, and uh, so we'll leave her about six inches long, and six inches will get us enough all the way around the top. So we're going to cut the listing uh, to match what this gap needs to be. When I was stretching this fabric on here, uh, you can see the grain pattern looks real nice in the middle and then as you get over to the edge it starts to kind of peak a little bit and you can see it kind of gets worse as you get further toward the edge so this is no longer a straight line it kind of arches out so I am going to pull this fabric off of here and recover it with what's out here. This channel around the back of the car is what holds a cable here and this cable will run through the bottom of the convertible top so it'll go uh, from the, basically the door pillar over there around this C channel and then back into this door pillar here and um, this channel is fairly small and it holds a lot of the fabric of the convertible top so in order to make that as easy as possible to kind of stuff uh, the fabric in there what we're going to do is uh, we're going to trim off all this extra right here that comes from uh, the folks who make the top. For the next operation here, you can see I've folded a bunch of the fabric over and that sort of thing, so I'll explain where we're at. This is the top of the back window, this is the bottom, so we haven't changed orientation here. What we want to do is we want to use some more of our adhesive and we want to glue this part down to the convertible top for, to the inside of the top so what I did was fold over this rear piece so we wouldn't get any adhesive uh, either on the face of it or on the rubber around the rear window and then I folded over all this stuff so we're spraying the back of it and then I used my plastic to kind of cover up the places where we know we don't want any glue and we can kind of adjust as we go through here but uh, you can see, you know, just want to make sure we get adhesive on both sides. We'll let it set up for 10 or 15 minutes, and then we'll come back and glue it all down. And at that point, you know, we can kind of move the plastic around. It's not that big of a deal. We're going to turn our attention to back to the front of the car here and uh, trimming up this foam. And I always work with a brand new razor blade when I trim stuff like this. And the reason is um, I buy them in boxes of 100 and they cut really sharp right when they come out of the box and then they start to dull up. And I've learned that at whatever they are, two or three cents a piece, it's just cheaper to uh, make one big cut, make it really, really nice and then take your razor blade and throw it in the trash and get another one for the next cut because you don't get a second chance at some of this stuff so uh, that made a pretty nice cut 
and you know our fabric's going to come right down against this. So we want it nice and even all the way across. We don't want a, an ugly cut there. Now it's time to uh, put our convertible top onto the car. Be very, very careful when you're doing this. I'm wearing rubber gloves because I tend to get my hands into all kinds of stuff that they shouldn't get into. And, uh, you know, I want to keep this top clean. I forgot to take my little chrome hooks out here, or my chrome pins. Friends comes in handy. Apparently, I don't have friends. <laughs> so I do this all myself. But, uh, It's going to be very careful. Whole piece start to maybe flatten out a little bit is a good way to describe it. But at the end of the day, this seam will sit right on top of this window and be perfectly straight with the window. It's just like doing a gap on a door or anything like that. Next operation is probably the scariest one in my mind, uh, but just to remind you, in I think it was in my last video on the convertible top, um, you really can't get closed back finished wa finish washers anymore. So what I did was take some stainless steel finish washers and I used some heat shrink and put it through the center hole and then filled them up with epoxy and let them dry so that uh, the back of them is relatively smooth and uh, that way they don't dig into the top around the edge they kind of have a smooth surface to bear on because this next operation we're going to poke a hole through here and we're going to attach the top right here at the factory mounting point there so this is a scary operation in that you have to put a hole in your brand new top um, but we're going to try and make it as nice as possible with these uh, modern day closed back washers here. I don't know if there's any magic to where these need to sit, but uh, what I'm doing is just putting the washer, I don't know if you guys can see that, just right in the corner there, and then uh, putting the screw through it. And again, this is all stainless hardware. Uh, and then I'm just screwing that right through the canvas. Yeah, there's nothing worse than putting holes in a very expensive convertible top that you waited for. For uh, I started attempting to order this thing in November of 2011 and it got delivered in January of 2013 uh, simply because of the Tweed made it a custom order and a lot of people just wouldn't didn't want to deal with that uh, which again uh, TMI made this top and uh, they made it incorrectly once and then they didn't really want to make it how I wanted it because they said they don't make tops that way. Uh, I went through M&T manufacturing as well and uh, they couldn't do it so you know it's uh, it's been a struggle to get this thing so it's kind of difficult to put holes in it like that but uh, I think we're looking good it's, it's feeling good so uh, our lines are starting to look nice our next step is going to be to attach the rear tensioning cable, uh, which is usually a longer cable, and uh, I'll throw in a good word here. Um, House of Gia was my supplier, and they use the top quality cables, and this one is actually wrapped in nylon. So the idea is that uh, if you just get a steel cable, uh, whoa, I didn't want to do that. Um, I wanted to drop that right on the foam instead of on the paint. If you get a rear cable and it's made out of just plain mild steel, uh, it can rust through. So there's a certain level of expectation just of the cable itself in terms of strength and material and that sort of thing. And uh, they try, they, they definitely bring you the highest quality pieces and parts that are available. Uh, it's just how they do business there. So um, you can get them from other places, but I don't know, you know, who has the same quality. But I'm sure there are other people who have that same quality. Um, also, the manual will tell you 
that this is a two-man operation. Uh, we don't have two men. We have me. So we're going to get this done with one man. So there's two little holes in the convertible top and these threaded ends just slide through and here. From here, uh, the cables slide through the hole in the body. And uh, on the other side, the hole didn't seem to be big enough. So we may have to do some, some drill work, which is always fun on a freshly painted car. The only thing worse than poking a hole in your brand new convertible top is drilling a hole into a car that's uh, freshly painted and uh, probably more more fear than it was worth right there but uh, there we have it we're in okay we're on the passenger side here so I'm reaching through I've got the top set way back here I'm reaching through to get the cable here. I've got a little flashlight set up. There's a little uh, U-channel right there and you've got to put this cable through it and then uh, I've got the nut here in my hand. I'm going to put that on just real loose, just a couple threads because you want it to stay as, as loose as you can because we've got to get it around the back U-channel. You can see I'm using a clamp here. I put a paper towel under there. I didn't want to get any dirt on the top and uh, we'll just have to work this top and you can see there's some padding in the way and that sort of thing but uh, we'll work this guy around and you can feel that U channel in there so uh, we'll just start to work this around and hopefully get it to a point where uh, we can get it all done by ourselves. We are now inside the car and I've got my little uh, lamp coming in here off the bench so I can see. So this is our rear window and you have to, I had to take the clamps off the back uh, wire there in the top and oh, this becomes very difficult when you're a big dude. Uh, our wire, which I don't know if I can get a hold of here, it's up here coming through our rear window has to go through this little hole which is outboard maybe three or four inches uh, from from the hinge there so our cable has passed through this little hole there's the hinge right there through the hole and then on the back side I don't know if you guys can see that or not there's the nut so it actually has a little uh, u-shaped piece back here with a hole in it I'm sorry there's not much light uh, but that's where it connects and and I'm just squeezed in here <laughs> so I can't show you much but uh, that's how you do it you just want this on loose for now and we'll tighten it up later when you're done tensioning the cable it should look like this this roll should be tight up against here no wiggly business um, at some points in the top it was obviously struggling you know the fabric was struggling to get under there I took a Bondo spreader because it's nice and soft and I just sort of slid it up underneath there to help the material along. I did wind up having to use some spacers. I need a flashlight. Um, <clears throat> grab my flashlight here. See if we can see this. Hang on. It's hard to see. But uh, yeah, there you go. I did have to use some spacers on both sides because I ran out of cable and uh, over there I think I may have used eight washers. I just bought a whole box of uh, quarter inch zinc washers and I used eight on one side. I think I used six on the other. Um, you know, doing it over I could probably go another two or three uh, back on this side simply because there's just a little bit just a little bit that's not perfectly tight so chances are uh, I will loosen this up after the video and go back and add some more spacers to this side this is where things get potentially very interesting um, I've got my trim piece here and what you need to remember is how this trim piece goes on 
So it lines up with the front of this bow here, uh, where it tips back. So all your staples need to go behind there, but sort of within this trim piece. So there's kind of a narrow, narrow place where that happens. Um, the other thing is, this needs to line up with the knife edge on the front of the bow because that's where this is going to meet the windshield. So it has, you want it to be in a perfectly straight line uh, with that knife's edge. And what will happen is you'll put this on and then close the convertible top and the hope is that uh, everything is nice and tight. If it's too tight, you have to loosen the cable from the back and let some fabric out. If it's not tight enough, uh, then you have to do just the opposite. You have to bury more fabric into that cable. So um, what I'm doing is just feeling with my fingertips here, uh, and I'm going to take the center piece and get it dead on the money, and then we're going to work out. And uh, I will need to cut this fabric here as well to work around our latch. just closed the top down so you can see I've got some straightening out of the foam I need to do we're seeing a little wrinklage in there uh, not a big deal I'll we'll fold it back and I can put my hand in there and straighten that out but you can see how this seam follows the windshield and this was the last staple I put in was right here so you can see you know where I'm kind of up and above that so as we work this top, that's exactly what you want. You want this sucker to just lay down perfect on the windshield frame. And uh, it, when, once that's done, then you can staple it off, and we'll see that in just a second. We're going to take a look at our stock top for just a second. And this has a couple rips in it that uh, I'll point out. But you can see where we're looking at, uh, that's the front bow pocket right here. Um, we're looking at that and it's clearanced here and uh, trimmed here actually I think that's ripped right there this one is actually cut properly so it's cut about an inch inch from the end of the pocket right in front of where our uh, latch goes and then it's clearanced around there in sort of a semicircular fashion uh, to let the top latch come through so let's take a look at this one over here and what that means is we need to cut this in here and then make a make appropriations for our latch right there sorry that's extreme close-up so we just need to make a little cut around there to give us room to move and then uh, <clears throat> we'll get to attaching this There's my finish stapling there, and uh, I think we're going to cut it off here, so I'm going to put the top up, and uh, we'll take a look at what that looks like. That's what you want it to look like right there. You want that seam to lay down right on top of the windshield frame. Uh, the only thing we have left here is the corners. You can see how they're kind of gappy. Uh, we haven't done this. We'll pull in, we'll put on the side tension cables and that'll take these little wrinklies out of there. It'll also tighten up this corner. We'll come back in, we'll glue this down and, and uh, secure it properly and then we need to do all the trim pieces and parts and uh, we should have it. But yeah, at this stage of the game you should be able to bounce a quarter off of this root and it is very, 
very difficult to close. I had to lay my entire body weight on top of this uh, to get it closed. So, you know, over time it will stretch a little bit, but this is all very, very tight through here. Don't want to pop the seams, just want it tight. That's it.